good morning, everyone. Um, Your Excellency, President Grimson, ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity today. Um, I won't take too much of your time as I know we're going to move um, more directly into dialogue because like, I think you would like the opportunity to, to ask some questions and engage more with us. But I'm going to take this chance to give you a quick snapshot about Canada and our work on Arctic issues internationally. To start things off, um, the circumpolar community is a very large area and I'd like to provide a little bit of context of what is Canada's north. Canada's north is a very large piece of land. We're talking about 40% of our land mass and our population is 50% indigenous. And as you can see from this map, in certain areas, the indigenous population reaches 85 to 90%. So Nunavut, Nunansiavut, and Nunavik. Because of these and many other factors, the North and its people are a central part of Canada's reality and identity. It's part of how we see ourselves. The other thing that I would flag about our North is that it has one of the youngest populations and certain areas it's growing significantly faster than the rest of the country. Population growth in Canada is probably averaging around 5%. If you're looking at the area of Nunavut, that's around 12 to 13%. The other thing that has also been flagged by others is of course, climate change is changing and impacting the Northern part of Canada much faster than the rest of our country. The other aspect that we should also take into consideration is that we have a relatively complex governance structure that includes federal, territorial, provincial, municipalities, land claim organizations, indigenous organizations. There are many stakeholders that are at the table when we're looking at Canada's north. At the same time, when we're looking at the changes that are happening globally, climate change, as has been reiterated by many of our colleagues here today, is having an impact all over the world. The other aspect that is coming to the forefront is, of course, there is glo growing global interest in the Arctic. So it's within that context and backdrop that I'd like to provide um, a snapshot on what Canada is doing internationally and what we're looking at going into the future. We have a commitment to enhance multilateralism and bilateralism. Collaboration and cooperation is important for the future of the Arctic. Canada supports an international rules-based order in the Arctic, and because of this, we have the stability, and the stability happens because of the strong bilateral cooperation among Arctic states, and of course, in the Arctic Council, where we have worked successfully together on the challenges and opportunities for over 20 years. Bilaterally, we work with our Arctic neighbor states as we often have shared interests and face similar challenges. It is also increasingly important for Canada to engage with those far from the Arctic, but who wish to work with us on common areas of interest. This also provides them an opportunity to better understand the realities of the Arctic and the North. On the multilateral front, it's of course not only the Arctic Council, um, but we also work very closely with Arctic and non-Arctic states across a multitude of different platforms, like the IMO, the um, Arctic Coast Guard Forum, and of course at events like today, the Arctic Circle Forum, um, I actually spent 12 years in Asia before my move to Norway, and since I've been working on Arctic affairs, one of the first trips that I did was actually back to Asia to discuss Arctic issues. So things really do come full circle. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to highlight the work that we do at the Arctic Council. Um, this really is the preeminent forum for Arctic governments and Arctic indigenous peoples. But in addition to that, because of the role of the Arctic states and the admittance of observers, this really gives us a chance to work with both members and observers to advance our shared interest. Moreover, when you look at how Canada engages on international issues at the Arctic Council, we take very much a Team Canada approach, if you will. I work with the Global Affairs Canada. Of course, our work heavily supports the initiative and the work of our senior Arctic official, but our other departments, like the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, Transport Canada, Crown, Religi uh, Crown Relations and Indigenous Affairs and Northern Affairs are critical, critical departments in our work internationally. Moreover, within the Arctic Council, we of course have the participation of the permanent participants. The other key area for international engagement for us, of course, is scientific research. Scientific research is an area where Canada has a long history of cooperation and collaboration with both Arctic and non-Arctic states. Canada, we are a leader in Arctic science, and we have a very vast domestic Arctic research network that can be leveraged to understand the Arctic region. 
Arctic research happens at all levels across many institutions. The one that I'd like to um, point out is, of course, Polar Knowledge Canada, which was set up in 2015, which has a mandate to advance scientific knowledge about the polar regions, and it fosters links around the world um, among the scientific community and community members for the creation and exchange of new knowledge. Polar Knowledge Canada is already leading our international efforts to build these partnerships to create new knowledge about the Arctic. Um, I want to take this opportunity to show you a picture of our new Canadian High Arctic Research Station in Cambridge Bay, Nunavut. This research um, centre has already supported over 30 research requests, totaling 2,200 researchers to date. So it is operational, but we have not officially opened it. But it just goes to show this commitment and this focus towards our international partnerships. CHARS, which is what it's affectionately known as, has already welcomed a number of Arctic scientists from around the world, Korea, Sweden, Japan, Russia, and more. One of the programs that we do have in place is the Early Career Research Pilot Exchange Program. It's designed to build research capacity and enhance collaboration. To date, we already have exchanges in place with countries like Sweden, Finland, Iceland, and Denmark. And Polar will continue to seek these opportunities for further collaboration. Um, just to close off, um, the theme of this session is about the future of the Arctic. And I just wanted to provide um, a little bit of background right now about what we're looking at as Canada looks towards future collaboration. Um, these are the, our areas of pr um, priority. We prioritize our relationship with the Indigenous peoples, protection of the Arctic environment, with a major focus on climate change, and sustainable northern economic development. This is a key domestic priority for our government and an important driver of foreign policy with many of our international partners. Because of this, our Prime Minister announced and committed to co-developing a new Arctic policy framework. And when I say co-developing, this means working very closely together with the stakeholders, with the people who have a say, the people who live in the North, about what their North is and what their North will be. Areas that we have set out as priority, of course, include infrastructure, strong Arctic people and communities, a strong, sustained, and diversified Arctic economy, Arctic science and indigenous knowledge, protecting the environment, global Arctic leadership, safety, security, and defense. Canada values the importance of global engagement. This engagement across both multilateral and bilateral platforms is important for our international Arctic cooperation and collaboration in order to ensure a strong, successful, and sustainable Arctic for the future. Thank you.